Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Essentials with Alexis, where I do the work so you don't have to. This is part two of the five part skincare series that I will be dropping over the next few weeks. So if you haven't checked out my previous video, make sure to do that. Today's video will be on all the external things I did to achieve clear skin. The first thing I did to clear my acne was getting chemical peels and enzyme treatments. There's so many different types of chemical peels, but the one you get will depend on your fits and what you need treated. Fits is a fancy term for Fitzpatrick, which means your skin tone. There are three different levels of chemical peels, light, medium, and deep. If you're first getting started with this, they're going to start you with a light chemical peel and this is just to see how your skin reacts and to give you some results without overdoing it. I tend to get medium and deep because I'm a licensed esthetician and I know what my skin can handle but I had to work up to get to this point. Chemical peels are amazing for cell turnover which means extreme exfoliation and fresh new skin. There are so many benefits to chemical peels. It's going to unclog your pores, improve skin texture, help with any discoloration, minimize sun damage, soften wrinkles and fine lines, minimize pores and dull and it'll help boost your skincare products. Acne is the result of clogged pores, which means by removing all of that dead skin and all of the stuff sitting inside of your skin, you're now left with a fresh new base. Now, when I mention chemical peels, people get kind of nervous, but I will say pain is very minimal. And for the results I've gotten, it's totally worth it. Enzyme treatments, on the other hand, are a very mild form of exfoliation. No pain involved, no heavy shedding, but still great results. It's a great alternative if you have very sensitive skin or or super dry skin. It's still going to exfoliate and get a couple of those layers off without as much downtime. And it's super natural. Enzymes are literally just proteins that eat other proteins. So it's just gonna eat all that dead skin away. The chemical peels I do, I can only get done every six to eight weeks. So I like to have an enzyme in between there to make sure my exfoliation is on point. Light chemical peels, however, you can get done a couple times a month. Deep chemical peels are a whole nother realm and I don't recommend getting them, especially when you're first getting started. So we won't even talk about that. So now you have fresh new skin. How do you maintain this? The answer is simple. Tretinoin. Like most of us, I have tried almost every topical treatment there is on the market. Benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, azelaic acid, retinol. There's so many different things on the market and it's so hard to know what is actually going to work. Plus everybody's skin is so different so what may work for one person may not work for another. While all the things that I just mentioned can be effective treatments for acne, the one thing that truly made the biggest difference in my skin is tretinoin. Tretinoin, similar to retinol is a vitamin A derivative. Vitamin A is the goat for skincare. It's amazing for cell turnover, it speeds up healing, reduces fine lines and wrinkles, supports the skin's immune system, and it promotes natural moisturizing. I told you, the goat. And the best part about it is you only have to use it at night. You do need a prescription for it, but it is pretty inexpensive, especially if you have insurance. I personally get mine from an online telehealth company called NuRx. It comes every three months, and without insurance covering it, it's only about $90, which is a hell of a lot less than all of the products that I wasted money on that didn't work for me. Now, if you plan on using this product, make sure to take your time. A lot of people go into this really aggressively because they get excited, but when you don't give your skin time to get acclimated, it's going to result in dry, flaky, painful, and sometimes worse acne. What I recommend is starting with using it once a week for a month and then gradually adding in days to see how your skin tolerates it. And I know a month sounds like a long time, but it's really worth the wait, trust me. And if you're thinking, I'm too young to be using tretinoin. You're probably not. Retinoids are safe for anybody from their teens up. And it's an amazing way to start anti-aging for preventative measures. No wrinkles. If I had the knowledge that I have now, I would have started tretinoin at 18. Another really important thing I started doing was slugging. And I know you've heard this a million times. I've been slugging before. Slugging was even popular, just saying. But especially if you're using a lot of actives like tretinoin, slugging is super important to make sure that you're maintaining your skin's barrier. For those that don't know what slugging is, it is the process of putting a moisturizing treatment on your face and then layering it with something that creates an occlusive barrier like Vaseline or Aquaphor to trap all of the moisture inside your skin. I don't always do this, but I do use it especially when I have a breakout and it's in the healing process. I will put on my treatments and layer it with a moisturizer and then I'll just put a little bit of Vaseline over the top of it to make sure everything is staying in there and I swear it speeds up the healing process and leaves me with less of a mark. Another thing I did externally to clear my acne was to stop 
picking at my face. I started getting extractions done by a professional before I was licensed, and then I started to do it myself once I became an esthetician. But a lot of times, if I do get a breakout, I'll just leave it alone. Usually I'll just ice it to make sure the inflammation goes down, and then I'll just put a hydrocolloid bandage over it. A lot of times it'll just pop on its own, or it will have the time to harden, which means it will have an easier time getting extracted. Because you guys aren't typically educated on how to do this properly, you end up spreading the bacteria all over your face and creating more damage than there needs to be. So my best advice when it comes to picking at your skin is to either do what I do or just go get them extracted by a professional. Okay, so this one is a little different, so keep an open mind. But another thing I did to clear my acne externally, which I wasn't sure if it should be external or internal because it's technically both, but Botox. Yes, that stuff people stick in their face to paralyze it, which can be great for anti-aging, just saying. But it also can be awesome for acne prone areas. I get Botox done regularly. I get it done like every three months. It's super inexpensive, it's like a hundred bucks. I started getting Botox because I wanted to prevent wrinkles and fine lines so that I can age gracefully. But after getting it for a certain amount of time, I realized I wasn't getting as many breakouts. So I talked to my injector about it. And the way she explained it to me was this. Botox Botox is a naturally derived protein, which can be used to help hyperhidrosis, excessive sweating, and this can reduce your pores ability to create oil. Less oil, less acne. I definitely don't think this is for everybody, especially if you're in your teens, but I've been getting this done for over six years and I love it. Now you've addressed all of your active acne, but you're still left with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or acne scars. Now what? There are three things you need to be focusing on. The first thing is going to be a tyranase inhibitor. The best time to treat a spot to prevent hyperpigmentation is immediately. The longer you wait to try to get rid of that dark mark, the harder it's going to be. Tyranase inhibitors block overproduction of melanin. By treating that spot immediately, you're gonna prevent it from ever being there. I do this anytime I get a breakout and I'm left with a tiny, tiny mark, if that at all. There are a lot of different types of tyranase inhibitors. My favorite are going to be Arbutin and Hydroquinone. Arbutin is a milder form of Hydroquinone, so I use that during the day. Hydroquinone is stronger and I use it at night. Now this is kind of a touchy subject because Hydroquinone doesn't have the best rep, but let's get a few things straight. Hydroquinone known is not a bleaching agent. All it does is stop the overproduction of melanin. It's not gonna take away your natural skin color. And it is extremely rare to have serious side effects. But you don't have to use this one. This is just one that I choose to use and the one that helps me the most. Alternatives to this are going to be kojaic acid, vitamin C, frulic acid, licorice extract, mulberry extract, tranexamic acid, the list goes on and on. Whatever you choose to use, make sure you have a tyranase inhibitor to prevent marks and to treat the ones you already have. The second thing and one of the most important things you could be doing is to wear sunscreen. Sunscreen is gonna prevent the sun's harmful rays from damaging your skin and prevent those dark marks from getting darker. You probably know this, but what you might not know is that you need to reapply your sunscreen every two hours. Yeah, I said every two hours. This is included in all the application instructions on all of the sunscreens. I don't know why I didn't think to look at this, but I wasn't doing this for years. I thought that I would apply it in the morning, one time, and I would be good for the whole day. Wrong. When I started implementing reapplying my sunscreen every two hours, I really noticed a huge difference in my dark marks and how long they lasted. So learn from me and reapply your sunscreen every two hours. If you're a person that wears makeup and don't wanna ruin it by slathering on sunscreen, I have a solution. There are facial sunscreens that you can just spray on, which I use pretty often, or there are powder forms of sunscreen. The third thing to address PIH and acne scarring is going to be microneedling. I love microneedling. Microneedling is a procedure that involves tiny needles pricking your skin. And I know you're probably thinking, why would I do this? Because it's amazing for your skin. It's going to stimulate collagen production, which means plump, vibrant, happy skin, reduce enlarged pores, smooth, uneven skin tone, improve skin's elasticity, reduce fine lines and wrinkles, and it's going to break up hyperpigmentation. This is amazing for those really stubborn spots that have been sitting there just chilling 
on your face forever, especially in combination with a chemical peel, which is what I do. And because it helps with elasticity and collagen production, if you have any pitting scars, it's going to help with that too. Although I do recommend laser resurfacing the most for pitting scars. Okay, that's it. That's everything I did externally to achieve clear skin. Now, if you guys have any questions about anything, or if you wanna see me get these procedures done, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to take you guys along with me. Again, I really hope this information was helpful. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any of this skincare series because I got three more videos coming your way. Love you guys and I can't wait to see you next week.